Club Club Radio Radio Club Radio Check it out Drop it Welcome to Victory for today This is Donald and Yvonne Taylor invite, uh, inviting you to uh, participate in our show today Today we have a, a exciting show Yvonne We have three okay. exciting women who's going to discuss um, issues related to being professional women, being mothers, and being wives. Mm -hmm. And uh, my hope is that all this discussion, that there's bits of knowledge that can be shared by our audience about some strategies and ways that can help working women out there balance this carefully dangerous lifestyle. <laughs> you know. um, Yvonne, could you induce our guest for a day? Well, I, I can. Uh, we have with us um, Ms. Shea Brownlee and Ms. Georgia Nicole. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Of course I'm here. And I'll let them here. each to share what they choose to share about themselves um, with our audience. Okay. Uh, but before we get started, I want to read a little bit from Proverbs, the 31st chapter. It's our power scripture, and I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. Uh, I'm going to start with verse 10, and then I'm going to move over to verse uh, 25, I think. So again, Proverbs 31st chapter, starting with verse 10. A wife of noble character... Who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. And I want to go from there. To I think the twenty-fifth verse and continue. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Amen. 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 And I'm saying today we're very fortunate to have, you know, three powerful faith, faith-filled women who can share uh, their testimonies of how they're able to balance the delicate and complex lives to be effective mothers, children, uh, mothers, excuse me, uh, <laughs> wives, and. Uh, professional women in your related professions. One thing that stands out to me about Proverbs 31 is here you have this woman who serves as an example to us all and she's doing so many things. She's she's keeping her household running. She's loving her husband correctly and respecting him. She's taking care of the kids. She's a merchant. She's making money. She makes a real estate deal. I mean, she's mm -hmm. sewing. She's doing it all. Yeah. But the thing that one wise woman had to point out to me is she's not doing all of these things at the exact same time. And I think that's key in maintaining a balance is knowing that, yes, you can do everything. You certainly can. With the Holy Spirit, with the Lord on your side. However, you're not going to do them all today. That's right. You have to recognize that there are limitations. Be it, be it your you your mor your mortal, <laughs> be it your finances, be it there's only so many hours in a day. You eventually do have to shower and sleep. And I know for new mothers, I have a child who's almost two. There are certain days where it's like, okay, do I want to take a nap or do I want to shower? I opt for shower. That's that's just me. I'm However, glad you did that today. Yeah, I I did I did do that today. But you know, I know some new mothers who will tell you, I haven't showered in four days, but I slept. And you know, you really have to pick your battles. I mean, that applies to 
any person, not just professional women and mothers and wives, but to anyone, you really have to decide how you're going to approach this and just take it one bite at a time. I totally have to agree with that. And it really is one bite at a time. And just from knowing that you should draw on wisdom from those that are around you because you will survive. Um, I just think about when I first had my, my kids and my kids are about 18 months apart. And so they often feel like they're the same age, which is 22. And I'm telling you, there are just some days of the week where I just don't know how we're going to get through it. And I have to think about the days when I had two kids in diapers and I thought that those days would absolutely never end, that I would always be nursing, I would always be carrying somebody, I would always be potty training, I'd always be trying to figure out what you're allergic to, um, and then they get older, they grow up, and then they can actually do some things for themselves, and I, I joke very often, um, I often tell Shay, I said, you know, I'm so happy that they can finally get in trouble, you know, they're actually allowed <laughs> to get in trouble now, I was like, I don't have to be so concerned about how you feel about it, it's, I can say, you lay down some laws now. But um, things do get better. Things do get better, and you have to find a way to enjoy them, even when you're tired, even when you're when you're exhausted, because they don't stay young, and they don't stay children forever. They don't stay babies forever. And at some point, you will miss you'll miss some of that. You'll enjoy your sleep, but you'll actually miss them while you're sleeping. So <laughs> yeah, the days the days are long, but the years are short. They are very short. Yeah, I'm so glad you both said that because I'm an empty nester, yeah. as you both know. <laughs> And when I look back and look at things I've accomplished professionally and some other things in my life, I realize how important family time is. Mm -hmm. And if you don't really think about what's of value to you and what you care about, it's very easy to get caught up in career and making a name and doing some other things and not spending that really important time with your kids. Mm -hmm. And that's time that you can't get back. Mm -hmm. You absolutely can't. And the most important thing that you can do is just pour into their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, do some other things, the career, whatever. And they, you know, do say it takes a village to yeah. raise a child. And, yes, you know, I really think that it does. It does. Um, but I think it is just so important, and sometimes nowadays we really get into the professional piece and put family on, on the back burner, um, and it's really important not to do that. So I'm glad to hear you guys. Well, I'm glad that you're that. talking, that we're able to talk with you about mm -hmm. this, because I think we're, we're looking at three people in different stages of mm -hmm. of child rearing, <laughs> so yes. to speak. Yeah. Because I mean, you can even speak from the perspective of them, of you being an empty nester and then still having to help as a grandparent. But you've always been a career woman as well. I have. And mm -hmm. so... I, and I think that you could probably either verify this or say or correct it completely, but it almost seems as if career women often run into the same issues that men would run into uh, when they were just the single breadwinner in the home, which is that there's that there's that conflict between, hey, I'm providing for you, I'm giving to you, I'm doing everything I can to make sure you have all that you need, but you still want me to spend quality time with you. And for you, that's more important, but at the same time, I have to think about these other things. And, um, and so that becomes a balancing act as well, because uh, even in this day and age, we were talking about kids being in school and schools demanding parents to be a lot, a lot more involved. And when I was growing up, parents weren't really required to be as involved as they are right now. And we didn't think much of it because everybody's parents were almost in the same boat. Everybody's parents yeah. were going to work and, you know, yes. and it just wasn't, yes. it was just a common thing. And my mom didn't have to show up for a lot of things. And we just didn't think about it <laughs> and think about it. But now I've got a second grader and a, and a kindergartner and we're on a, on a schedule to be in the classroom certain days of the week. It's like a 20 hour job to do schoolwork. And um, because they send home the work and the work is designed for parents mm -hmm. and children to do together. Yeah. You have to sign off on the homework when it's done. And with, so if you don't show up to all these little events at school that they have, that becomes a challenge because Johnny's mom is able to come and Susie's mom yes. is always able to come. And I'm like, John, it's nice that Johnny's mom and Susie's mom can come. But at the same time, I'm protecting Johnny and Susie's mom from people breaking into their homes at my job. <laughs> <And> <laughs> so yeah. they need me too. And so that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. and, and then also saying, hey, you know, if I don't go to work, then 
we, we, we probably don't have anywhere to live. You know, that you, you enjoy Quality a certain lifestyle. In the car. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to find that there's a balancing act there where sometimes you, I, I find that in my own life that there might be a season where I'm not able to be as available, but then I have to make it up. In the time that I do have, I have to make sure that's quality. No talking on the phone, no this, no that, that they have my full attention in order to make sure that they really enjoy that time together. Okay. Uh, but I like to raise up the issue of how do you also balance the needs of your significant other? <laughs> I, I heard an excellent interview involving Jada Pinkett. Mm -hmm. And the person who posed this question was her own daughter. Mm -hmm. Willow Smith is, what, 13, mm -hmm. if that? Yeah. And she asked her mother, how does she balance being a mother, being a wife, handling a career, and being her own self, how to self-preserve? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And Jada Smith's answer was incredible. She, she went into what her family needed. You know, the children need a mother, the husband definitely needs a wife, and you should be doing that first. But there were certain seasons in her life where she couldn't tend to her husband first because her children were small. Mm -hmm. And then she, she scaled back and she said, but if I don't take care of myself, mm -hmm. you don't get what you need as a child. Your father doesn't get what he needs as a husband and everyone is unhappy and our home is out of sync. Mm -hmm. And while it's easy to say that, it is not always easy to implement that. And I've, I've had that struggle. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm getting to the point now, my daughter is about to be two, where I will just put her in her room and do what so many parents say not to do, set up the digital, tele the digital babysitter, <laughs> YouTube, and I spend time with my husband. And we're getting more into the rhythm of asking people to watch her. We enjoy our daughter, mm -hmm. but we do need to spend that one-on-one -on -one time. Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done, but it is absolutely necessary. And you notice a difference in your home. This, you're out of sync. Mm -hmm. Things don't flow as well as they should because you haven't spent that time reconnecting or speaking, just having conversation other than shop talk. Right. Mm -hmm. Very true. And you do have to find time to make that targeted, you know, spend time talking about each other mm -hmm. um, and what your goals are with each other and just enjoying each other for the reasons why you got married to that person. Right. <laughs> it's like, I think you're funny. You think I'm funny. Let's go be funny. That's right. Let's go talk and be funny and, not, and sit, sit around and talk about all of our, our goals that we're not hitting today. <laughs> and, you know, because that happens a lot, too. But we've also we've also had to, you know, because starting the radio station was another thing. And uh, there's always somebody in my house in school. And I know that you can attest to that as well. Shane. Yes. So there's always somebody in our house going to school in some fashion, and of course, working. And so what we've had to do a lot of is try to find time in those activities that are probably are not fun so we do the laundry together um and we'll sit around and fold clothes and 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 talk together and just mm -hmm. enjoy each other's company um trying to find even those activities that are our jobs like we'll clean the kitchen together um whatever time that we can find to spend with each other and making sure we keep kids to a strict bedtime has been a big important thing because even if i could talk even if we have one hour without each without kids talking in our ears that's enough time for us to to feel like we've recalibrated and can go to sleep. And we often fall asleep in about three minutes. It doesn't mm -hmm. take much. <laughs> it's like three minutes. <laughs> I love you, I love you. <sighs> and you know, it's, it's, it's over, we're tired. <laughs> I think those are just really awesome examples mm -hmm. of ways to connect and kind of make it work through the course of the day when you have to do certain things but then, just like you said, if you don't connect with your partner, everything really is out of sync. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, confession here, because I remember once I was so gung-ho about career, when yeah. I went to work, I wouldn't take my husband's calls. I'm right. just busy, I'm at work, I'm wow. you know, into that, mm -hmm. and, and it's all about this career thing. And one day, uh, I was meeting with my boss, and, and Donald called, and my and I'm like, okay, I'll call him back. And um, my boss looked at me and said, wait a minute, we need to talk. Mm -hmm. You need to understand, I don't care what you're doing for me or what you're doing on any job. Mm -hmm. You always take your husband's call. Everything else can wait. Wow. 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 And wow. it really made me set up and think wow. of what I was actually doing. And that thank God mean, you had a boss who was so forward-thinking and understood priority. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. That's not always the case. Yeah. Well, he told me, I can be meeting with you, but if my wife calls, we're stopping. <laughs> <laughs> Set the priority. And oh it, exactly. And oh it made gosh. me really examine my values and how I prioritize things mm-hmm. and how I was putting myself and career over husband and family. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, sometimes you just really have to step back. Yeah. And look at what you do and what you value, and then make some adjustments. I oh. think the other thing for me is just the whole thing around self care. Um, not real good with that. <laughs> I <laughs> confess, I'm not real good with that. Either. I'm Absolutely the worst. And, and I agree that when you're not good with yourself, you can't much be good for mm-hmm. anybody else. So I think it's really important to step back and take some time mm-hmm. for you, even if it's just a bubble bath yeah. in the evening. Um, you know, something that is just something that kind of soothes your soul and refreshes you and it doesn't have to be long it could be even a half an hour that you take every day just for me play music or whatever and then you can just be a much better person um, for everyone else and you know I found that I wasn't doing enough self-care when I realized that I was trying to stay up later than Donald every night because I just wanted some time to myself. Gotcha. Wow. And I'm gotcha. sitting there thinking, oh, why don't he go to bed? I'm so tired. Yeah, you're tired. <laughs> you're tired. Yeah, you're tired. Go to bed. And I'm like, no, Yvonne, you're, you really need to examine this. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. not how you're supposed to do and it. And you have to find something that you can sacrifice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, do. do I need to plan my meals so I can have that extra half an hour? Mm-hmm. Do I need to shower at night versus shower in the morning? Mm-hmm. Do I need to get my hair done more often so it takes less time on a daily basis to do my hair? It's those mm-hmm. little things that, that really do add up. Or even, do I need to really dust every day? No, I do not. do some other <laughs> no, no, I, I, I would like to jump because I know that two or three of us are going to have this yeah. conversation. She's gonna, I'm going to continue to purchase her maid. That's I, need, I her. need a purchase I housekeeper to to purchase at the Brownlee her. house stacked. No, but that's something I had to learn. I think kids actually taught me how to how to relax mm-hmm. um, with that because you just can't control everything when there's when children are around. You just can't. They really are the boss. Don't tell them out loud, please. You try <laughs> to pretend that they're not the boss, but they are the boss. They're running the show. They, they run the show. Yes. Everything that's going yeah. on with them, you're responsible for. So they are the boss. But it, I had to learn how to walk by it and say, I can't do that right now, and it's okay. Yeah. We're not going to die mm-hmm. if I don't pick these things up right now. Mm-hmm. Because um, then, then you start training your kids to do the cleanup work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and so right. now they, they've learned how to pick up their own space. And, but I, one thing that my dad told me a long time ago that I thought was really, really valuable, and I, he told me when I had my daughter, he said, never forget that your husband is just as capable as you are. And he's a capable parent. He's a capable, he's a capable um, everything. He's mm-hmm. just as capable as you are. And he was specifically at the time talking about being a parent. He might not do it the way you do it, but he's right. just as capable Absolutely. as you are. And I think that that's an area of trust that you, that you learn to trust mm-hmm. the other person, that they can get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, not on your time frame all the time. Mm-hmm. Not exactly the way you like to get it done, but they're just as capable. And trust them to do that. And trust them to learn. Mm-hmm. You know, mistakes happen, right. and we all have had to make mistakes to learn. And we never were perfect, so... Let it happen. And your spouse will have their own relationship with your child. Oh, yes. There's a, there's a different expectation. My daughter knows that when daddy gives her a bath, the water is much deeper. <laughs> and she spends a and lot more time. Her. Yeah, she goes swimming <laughs> instead of the little quick bird bath that mom gives her. And that's okay. I was, I was horrified that he gave her a sugar cereal for breakfast one morning. But I said... She is eating, and she gets a meal at school. This is not the end of the world because the child had all of the sugar. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's a one issue I'm hearing here is setting priorities. You mm-hmm. know, that's very important. It's a must. Um, oh, yes, it's vital. You know, also as you was talking, it came to me that each of you are in the middle. You're a caregiver for your mother or for your parents. But also, you caregiver for your children. Mm-hmm. How do you range deal that struggle and allocating times and priorities? 
I know it, it's conflicting at times. I hire people. No, I'm, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm thankful that as my parents age, I have a sibling. And my sibling has a fully capable wife, Georgia Nicole, oh, so who, who I would trust with my life, my children's life, and our parents' life. I know that not everybody has that story, but I really think it's it's a game plan. It's an it's an action item that has to be addressed. If you cannot figure this out, you need to figure this out because it's going to happen. I mean, we we are all growing older, and it's going to come up. It's going to come up. There's no way around it. And because I chose to have my children later, that's something that's been on my mind. That how am I going to balance kids in high school and dying parents? Uh-huh. Both of those situations on their own could be a potential nightmare. Well, let's just say elderly parents. <laughs> <laughs> well, elderly. I mean, she elderly yeah, and, know. and, you know, Older after parents, that, so, you know. Yeah. You go to meet yeah. Jesus. I'll see you a little bit later. <laughs> don't, don't push us through. <laughs> I'm, when she's a teenager, late uh-huh. teen. But it's interesting that you talk about it because, you know, when you think about it, I, when I really think about how I tackle a day and how, how I would tackle that these situations, it's probably the same way I tackle everything. It, you just, like she said, you just have to get it done. And um, if you just have to make sure that you're working on what's most important first what's the most what's the most emergent what's emergent today you really can't look too far ahead you can plan ahead but you have to work in the moment that you're in um you can, it's easy to become overwhelmed if you start looking at what's ahead of you or too far ahead of you and that for me if there's too many things in front of me to do i'll do nothing absolutely nothing ditto <laughs> i am the exact yeah, same way now i'm overwhelmed i can't you yeah. know so i can only do what's 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 in my what's immediately in front of me I think the other thing is to not overthink it I think there's so much power in action and you just do it because I've almost had to start reasoning with myself let me back up a bit I have to reason with myself I've got all these things to do it's either I'm going to sit here and be upset about it or I'm going to get started because the sooner I get started is the sooner I can get done so let's just go you have to put out fires just go <laughs> you don't go. let a fire become a forest fire yeah just go you have to do it Go time. It's always go time. And action, action is always an answer for everything. If you just get started, you can get something done. If you don't get started, you can't get it done. You'll never get it done. So just get started. Just tackle it. I always say that moving is 90% of the game. Right. Yeah, you know, just do it. Just, just showing really up. Show up. It's 90% of the game. I'm with you. I always yeah. say that. Just show up. You're, you're already beating 50% of the competition if you're showing up. Mm-hmm. And, and I would just say take a step back when it feels so overwhelming and really examine why are you doing some of the things that you do. Amen. You yeah. know, how important uh, are those things to you? Uh, are those things that society values or that you value? Are there things that you can put off for another day or not do at all? Right. Are there things that don't really mean something to you, but it's someone else's expectation that you do those things? And if it doesn't make money, it's not important. I'm joking. No. It don't make dollars. It don't make sense. No, no, well, I'm, and I, I have to piggyback off of you, what you said, Miss Yvonne, because... In, in my household, there are certain things that I do not deem important at all. Mm-hmm. I can put a lot of things off for another day. But when you're married to a type A person who's like, why isn't this done? <laughs> you had the time. You had the capabilities. It's like, no, but I didn't have the mental bandwidth <laughs> yeah. to do that. And you really have to understand your limitations. Like, mm-hmm. I could stay up another half an hour and wash all the dishes and tidy up the kitchen. But I'm not going to be of any value to anyone in the morning. Late nights make late mornings, as my sister said. Oh, yes. That's my latest line. Yeah, late nights make late mornings. (laughs) And I can't afford to lose those minutes in the morning. Being the only male here, here, I think, from my point of view, to help set the priorities in my wife's life is really knowing at what point where she's tired. Mm Mm-hmm. Once I enough is that. enough. Yeah. And stepping in and saying, you know, you're going to sit down. I'll take care of this. Or you don't need to be doing that. And often men might feel, hey, it's not my place. But I see as my role as a spouse to be, in being support of my wife is let her know her limitations. 
You know, I appreciate, I appreciate that you that. said that because honestly, that was the one that was one thing that I appreciated when Michael started stepping up and stepping up and mm-hmm. saying, "No, you don't do that. Stop doing that." And I would say, "Yes." <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, my Jesus. Said, oh, yeah. You said I didn't do that. I'm going to bed. <laughs> you know, that was so so mm-hmm. critical that um, that husbands feel comfortable uh, being able to step in and say, "No, that's enough." Um, sometimes, sometimes we need that. Yeah. And you have to do what works in your household. Mm-hmm. I mean, Indeed. if it doesn't work for you, please don't do it. Yeah. Right. And if it Absolutely. works well, continue doing mm-hmm. it until it doesn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. And you find, I find a lot of young people who I mentor who are approaching marriage or newly married, they don't understand that concept. Well, he's supposed to do X, Y, and Z, right. and I'm supposed to do these mm-hmm. things. And I said, who said? Right. Exactly. Right. Who said He's a chef. Why isn't he cooking? You can barely boil water. You know, or, you know, Mm -hmm. you're better with money. Why aren't you handling the finances? And you really just have to find your rhythm and work with that because it works. Mm -hmm. Um, It's interesting you bring it up because next week we're starting a series on hints for successful marriage. After oh 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we have something to share. <laughs> I hope so. I believe you do. Uh, and one thing we'll be talking about is that respect, also setting, setting parameters and limitations within marriages, and how the husband and wife can work together and not in opposition to each other, but work together to build a common, strong, faith based relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be phenomenal. I can't wait to produce it. <laughs> I want to know. February is going to be amazing, folks. Make sure you're tuning in for that. Yes, yes. indeed. Yes. Um, f- from a faith perspective, where is faith in your relationship? And all the stuff you're doing, I'm hearing women who are really overwhelmed. With, where is your faith? Where is God? Where is Christ in the midst of your life right now? Oh, to make that short, Jesus is the center. Of it all. <laughs> of no. it all. Um, the one thing that you can uh, you can benefit from in a faith based relationship is that if you have a disagreement or you're not getting along or you don't agree on a point, that if you bring it to the Lord, He will bring clarity to you both. Mm-hmm. Ditto. <laughs> Easy and you said can sit the Lord that. after Him. Sick Him, Jesus. <laughs> yes. You saw what He did, Lord. <laughs> you saw. You see everything. That. You saw that. Thank you, Jesus. Take that. Hallelujah. I want to thank you all. Uh, all three of you, and for your time today, because it's a very exciting and interesting show and I hope that uh, we can try this again. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for having us. God bless you. Thank you, Donald. Have Bye-bye. a great week. Bye.